are already attained, either were already perfect, complete, or mature, but I follow after that, I may apprehend that which also I am apprehended of, Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, already obtained, uh, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, those things those things and those rules and those compliances and those conformities and that peer pressure that I was living for before, but reaching forth to the things which are before, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So now my standard of living has shifted from being conformed to this world to being transformed into a life with God. Amen. So when I make a decision every day, I'm lining it up with that resurrected life. Every decision I make, I'm lining up with that resurrection. I'm not, I'm not making decisions based on the standard of the job or, or the mom and dad or, or, conform, or, the, or the fellas. I'm making a decision that's lined up with the life that God died for me to live. Amen. All right, so, so, so this is the key. The key is we want to live the resurrected life uh, and we want to tap into that power. So now, when I'm born again, when I, when I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, uh, the scripture says that I'm regenerated from the inside. So the spirit of God comes in me, taps into my spirit, and, and quickens me, makes me alive. So, so now I have the indwelling of the spirit on the inside of me. But the goal is what's on the inside of us to manifest on the outside of us. Because, uh, you know, uh, undiscovered treasures revealed, we start off the year with 2 Corinthians 4, 7, a treasure hidden in the earthen vessel. So there's power on the inside of me. Uh, now unto him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or think according to the power that works in us. So there's power in me to do exceedingly abundantly above all I can ask or think. Now stop and start to think, what does that look like? Exceedingly abundantly above all I can ask or think. Because you're thinking some things. You're asking God for some things. But, but, but take, take, go to as far as you can reach in your belief. I mean, to where you can't reach no more. Okay, at that point, exceedingly starts. Reach as far as you can and exceedingly. Well, at that point, abundantly starts. Reach as far as you can and abundantly. At that point, above starts. Reach as far as you can there of all you could ask or think. Now, now we ain't even got to, to, to the first level. But God, according to, in harmony with the power that works in you, there's some power that you got to tap into. There's some resurrection power. That's why he said, man, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep emptying out all that I've gained in this world, that harmonize with this world, until I, 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 I'm going to keep digging and digging and digging until I tap into that well of power that's in me. That resurrection power. It's trying to apprehend me, but I'm going to try to apprehend it. And I'm going to keep, keep going deeper and deeper. And when I, when I feel I can't go no more, I'm going to keep going deeper because in my time of weakness, he's made strong. And I'm going to keep going deeper until... Till I hit a gusher of power that everything I touch, everything I do, starts to pour power all over it. So now I don't have to manipulate. Because see, that's still conforming to the world when I got to manipulate. Now I don't have to hustle. Now I don't have to compromise. Because my cup runneth over. I'm so filled up, now I don't have to hoard. See, because my cup runneth over, so it's so much flowing out of me, I'm looking to give it away. See, when they was on at one heart or one accord, and nobody counted nothing of themselves, they were so saturated with the power and the presence of God that everybody's cup was running over. So it was easy for them to just just touch lives and they were looking for another opportunity to pour that power out but the everyday stuff that we could comply that we get our status from you know what type of car you drive you know like when you get the car and you you hang out in the parking lot longer so people can see that you got a new car you know you like you leave work but you walk slow 
Because you want people to see you pulling out. You see somebody coming out too, and you're like, man, they might not see me, so I got to wait a little bit. You know, then you don't normally speak to them, but you speak to them because now, you know, what's up? How you doing? Because you want to know you got a new car. Because that's your status. You know, your status is my ride. You know what I'm saying? Or, or your new shoes or something like that. And, you know, you, all of a sudden you got a kick spirit. You know, you're just kicking stuff. You know, because you got, you got, because that's your, your significance is what's on your feet, not what's in your heart. Right? Oh, so y'all know what I'm talking about. Right, so, so, so you, but you've gone way beyond that. See, what they did was their significance was the power that they operated. When somebody got healed, walking by them. You know, when somebody else started walking in power, that was their significance. I just, oh my God, I just imparted some more power. When, when, when they cast a demon out of somebody, that was their significance. Healing, demons being cast out, people starting to see that couldn't see no more. Now we rolling, they, they were happy. So when circumstances try to pull them back into your significances and what you have and if you get these bills paid, they were like, oh man, we ain't got time for that. Don't get distracted by that. Uh, we'll cover that. Let's just keep on rolling in power. What, what? I mean, imagine Christ dying so you could pay a bill this week. So that's it. So he gave his life. He gave up all power. To, listen. For him to give up all power, God's power is, if God pours out his power, immediately the entire world changes. That's how powerful God is. Covers, the scripture says he's, he's, he's omniscient, omnipotent, and uh, omnipresent. So he's everywhere, he's all powerful, and he's all knowing. So when power comes out of him, it covers everything at the same time. So Jesus has this power because he was with God. In the beginning, he was with God, you know, uh, John 1. And uh, Genesis 1. All right, so the scripture says that power became flesh and dwelt among us. So once that power comes into a fleshly body, it now is coming into limits. It's now dealing with limits. All right, so, so, so now it says the, the word became flesh and dwelt among us so we could become the word. He, he became limited. The scripture says he became poor that we might be rich. Poor meaning he had all power, and be, poor means to, to be without, to have limits. He became limited so we could be limitless. So he gave up all that power for us to pay a bill, for us just to get a new suit, get some nice rims, booming system. Is that it? For us just to have sex today. Or as AJ says, five seconds of pleasure. That's it. That's what he died for. Because you could do all that without him dying. Are we living that, that, that great power or, or uh, the Revelations uh, 118 says, uh, I was dead, now I'm alive, and I live forevermore. So forevermore powerful life. Are, are we doing that? I mean, since we showed up on Resurrection Sunday, are we showing up on Resurrection Sunday just to look cute? Are we showing up because we really want to um, show some appreciation for that power? So, it's, it's, I mean, is somebody that was dead, are they alive because of you this week? Now, that will represent his power. Is somebody that was blind now sees this week? That will represent his power. Is somebody that was infirm now healed this week? Lost, but now they're found. Blind, but now they see. Did you even talk to anybody about the power this week? Last week. Week before that. Week before that. Anytime this year. Now we represent the power. I mean, just... A shout out. Just engage somebody. So, see, because my wife teaches this in the evangelism class. The Holy Spirit is what, who convicts. It ain't you. But, but does he have access through you to just engage somebody in a conversation so he can move on them? So the power in you can tap into and wake up the power in the resurrector. Are we doing that? Are we so caught up in us, in our world, 
in our in our next bill or our next uh, you know uh, opportunity to present ourselves as having more than somebody else. You know, are, are we so caught up in that that we we're, we're missing why we have more <laughs> to give us access to more lives, to draw more people to your platform? So we. Well, why are you looking at me like that? I, 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 that was a matter of fact. I, I figured y'all doing that already, right? All right? There's so many people coming to the kingdom, you know, because you talk to them about the Lord. Or are you just mad because somebody hurt your feelings this week? So you're using a resurrecting power to exact revenge on somebody. He forgave you of your sins and died for you when you didn't deserve it. But what you're doing is you're using that to exact punishment on somebody else because they did you wrong or they didn't know how to appreciate you. They didn't know how to take care of you. Honestly, people just don't know. I was hurt. I was left with strangers. Not because uh, uh, my dad is evil. He was young. I was in diapers. The rest of the kids was older. I mean, he, was a, he wasn't going to change from being a player just because he got divorced and he has a baby. He ain't know any better. That's the way he was taught. But he wasn't trying to punish me. He actually thought he was helping me. Like, okay, he's better off where he's at. I ain't interviewed the people, but he, he thought that. So I'm, I'm going to spend all my time. I'm going to make you pay. You left me with straight. How could you leave me with these people? Well, now, I was thinking that for a while, just for the record. Yeah, I, 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 yeah we're talking, you know, uh, BC. You know, that was before Christ. Now, it's after Christ. I'm, I'm way past that. But, but, but what I realized is I was using all my might and my energy thinking I was punishing him. And it was, it was, I was drinking uh, poison expecting somebody else to die. It was killing me. Well, I was, a, you know, just, I was talking to some friends from New Jersey recently. They was like, man, you just, you, you just did not care. It's like, no, nah, really? Like, no, 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 you didn't, McKeith. You, we, we scared to even talk to you. It's like, seriously? No, I'll be saying seriously because you I'm so far removed from that guy. But I'm saying I was using God's died for me. And I was using died for just to uh, exact a punishment on somebody, to hold bitterness in me. So is that what he died for? He died to give me life to 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 resurrect life in others. But I, I was speaking death to myself and others. Is that what he, is that what the goal is? Or I was, I was bringing packages of compromise into relationships. So instead of resurrecting life, I'm bringing kryptonite around them. Okay, you look like you're living right for God. But we have to change that before this week's over. That was my line. That girl told me she was saved. You see how saved she'd be before this week's over. I didn't know what it meant, to be honest with you. I thought it was like some club. You know what I'm saying? I was like, saved. They think they, I thought it was like a click. You know, like, saved. Everybody be talking about they say. Yo, yo, dog, we say I saved she's gonna be before this week's over. Then I go talk to the person and be like, Yeah, she says she was saved. <laughs> they they just be look, they just be saying stuff like that. Not knowing God had designed me to influence lives, but I was perverting that gift. So I was influencing lives, but I was bringing them from life to death. Here, have some of this kryptonite. Oh no, it'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah, people that never drank before, never got high before. But the whole time I was supposed to be giving life to people. Not assisting people in losing their life. Not making it easier for them to compromise. Oh, sure. I'll, I'll, oh, you were thinking about compromising, but you, you, you're on the fence? Fine. I'll make it easy for you. I'll sign up to compromise with you. That'll make it easy for you to compromise. How's that? I'll do it with you. Is that what we're supposed to be doing? Are we supposed to be bringing power to folk? Are you even making an effort to bring power? Is that, is that cool? Oh, this ain't no Resurrection Sunday message. We just supposed to hear about how he got up. He got up for you. We're trying to find out why you haven't gotten up. Yeah, he got up. He cool. He's sitting on the right hand of the Father. Are you sitting on his right hand? Yeah, so, so that's, that's what we're here for. We're trying to see, have you got up? 
Are you still lying in the grave? 